What's up, guys? Of course, we're going to do Q&A at some point. But, um... <laughs> some of the... Some of the questions are funny. Um, important topic that I want to cover first, and then we'll do some Q and A. You know, like the title says, you know, how many sets per week is best for growth? And the reason I wanted to cover this was because I posted something on Instagram, and uh, one of the comments was. Isn't it the general consensus that I think it was that more volume is better? And it's like, well, first of all, no, that's not the general consensus. Um, that is the, <laughs> the the consensus of a certain portion of people. There are some people who think who think exercise volume is the stimulus. There are some people that think the exercise selection is the stimulus. For instance, there's a different stimulus between a bench press and a machine press. These people are all obviously morons. Then there are some people who believe intensity is the stimulus, or some people believe frequency is the stimulus. There are actually some idiots that think where you get your protein from is the stimulus. <laughs> there was a guy who asked Dorian Yates while we were hanging out with him, you know, is it okay if I get my protein through chicken instead of turkey because I don't like turkey? And Dorian Yates looked at him like, yeah. <laughs> you know, th that's the confusion. But the thing is, this is where this comes from. Um, it comes from, of course, it comes from a lot of meta-analyses. But you have to look at who is doing the meta-analyses. You know, when looking at a research paper, look at who's financing it, who's publishing it, who's conducting it. And then you follow the money. Now, a lot of the meta-analyses done about exercise volume come from Krieger, Krieger I mean, Schoenfeld, a couple other idiots. But we need to realize Brad Schoenfeld is on the board of the NSCA. He helps come up with the curriculum. <laughs> so he's obviously not going to publish something that goes against the NSCA guidelines. He's likely going to publish things that uh, affirm them. kind of conflict of interest, I would say. You know, for instance, there was this one, uh, you know, cold plunge or ice immersion, cold therapy, whatever the fuck you want to call it, is pretty popular. Um, so I started looking into it, and I just went, um, what did I say, cold plunge pub med or um, cold immersion therapy or ice bath therapy, whatever, pub med, and I started looking at papers. In the majority of the papers I found show they don't really do anything. Besides one. One of the papers I found showed a lot of benefit to basically reaching a point of hypothermia with these cold baths, ice baths, whatever. And the person who conducted and published the research was also selling a book and was on the Huberman podcast, and this podcast, and that podcast. So it's kind of obvious there's financial interest. So, but again, this how many sets per week thing. The, the biggest problem with this is in the exercise research community. A set, the way a set is performed is not standardized. Now, if the way a set is performed is not standardized, 
then how are you going to measure how many sets per week is optimal? If I take 10 groups and you say, hey, do a set of bench press, as many as you can, it's gonna look different. <laughs> some sets may be high intensity, some sets may be low intensity. Some sets may be extremely sloppy. Some sets may have strict form. Some sets might be longer than others. For instance, if I took, you know, 50 pound dumbbells and I did five reps like this, one, two, three, four, five, and then I took 50 pound dumbbells and I did reps like this. One. Two, etc. Are those the same thing? No. <laughs> the second set is much harder, much longer, more motor unit recruitment, more time under load, they're not the same. So how could these meta-analyses even conclude how many sets per week is optimal for growth when a set is not standardized? When people perform sets differently? The way I do a set is far different than the way most people do a set. People who do these sloppy sets, short time under load, low intensity, shitty form, lots of momentum, they're gonna need a lot more. So one meta-analysis by um, Schoenfeld was compared, it looked at 15 studies. He concluded, I think 10 or 20 sets per week is optimal for muscle growth. But if you look at the studies, first of all, the studies either compared one to three sets, three to six sets, uh, one, three, and five sets, etc. They compared all different groups of you know, sets per workout, sets per week, whatever. Most of the studies, uh, 13 out of 15, found no significant difference when it came to lower volume groups versus higher volume groups. Meaning, it didn't really matter whether you did three sets of chest press per week or six. It didn't matter if you did six sets of chest press per week or 12. It didn't matter if you did three or five. Didn't matter. But if you look at the individual studies, the way a set was performed was not controlled in most of them. So that meta-analysis tells us effectively fucking nothing. But people will read the title and read the conclusion and say, oh, 20 sets per week per muscle group is optimal for muscle growth and go, I'm based. I'm a research-based trainer now. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, but what do those 20 sets look like? Because I could have you do one or two sets per muscle group per week. That would be 20 times harder than the 20 sets most people do. So my point is, when people ask, how many sets per week? How many workouts per week? How many exercises per workout? Blah, 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 is optimal. If nothing is standardized, you can't get an answer. So as you notice, my answer usually is, it depends. Depends on various factors. How many sets per week per muscle group for you is optimal? Depends on various factors. The number one factor is, how are you performing the set? Are you going to actual muscle failure? Or are you going to sticking point? Are you going nowhere near muscle failure? Like, what are you doing? Are you doing fast repetitions, slow repetitions? Are you using lots of momentum, which reduces motor unit recruitment, or lifting relatively slow, which increases it? Don't know. Okay, so we need to first figure out, how are you performing a set? Like, it's all, all, this, all this debate on sets, one set versus three set. How, how can you say one set is effective? Because we're not doing a set. <laughs> I say one set is more effective than three sets because the one set I, I teach 
is 10 times more effective than the three sets most people do. That's how. So, you know, when I say one set is as effective as three sets, in your mind, you are thinking of the way you perform a set or see people perform sets, which is generally extremely poorly. And you go, oh, that can't be. No way one set could be effective. No, not the way you do it. Make sense? No, the way you do a set, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the average gym goer. No, the way you do a set, average gym goer, is not, one set will not be effective. Not the way you do it, the way I do it. The way I do it will leave you throwing up on the floor. The way you do it will just be a buffer between text messages, you know? So, one, how is a set performed? So how many sets are optimal per week? I don't know, how are you performing the set? Number two, your tolerance. Number three, your recovery ability. That's it. So we can't know how many sets per week is best if nothing's standardized. The fitness community, the exercise research community doesn't standardize the way a set is performed. So any study based on how many sets is optimal is fucking useless, obviously. That's like saying <clears throat> how much um, medicine per week is optimal for getting rid of a cold and then everybody having a different measurement of their dose. One dose is one milliliter, one dose is five milliliters, one dose is 10 milliliters. And they go, well, I don't fucking know because <laughs> the measurement is different between everybody. Um, so how are you performing the set? Then again, you know, your, your tolerance to those sets, your ability to recover from them. But here's the thing. And The truth is, and if you read enough research, like I have for 10 years, you'll you'll notice one, one thing. Almost nothing makes a difference for muscle growth. Your muscles are gonna grow how your muscles are gonna grow. The only thing that makes a significant difference in muscle growth is intensity of effort. And the reason most people lack muscle growth is because what most people perceive as failure or perceive as an intense set is not. And I'm going to give you an example of that. Um, go ahead and keep the qu questions coming. I'm going to answer them in a, question, in a minute. I need to figure out how do I do this? Wait, do I want to? No. One second. Try this. Does that work? Probably should have set this up beforehand, but whatever. Okay, so if we look at the way this guy performs a set, ready? Okay, if you're performing a set like that, yeah, you're going to need quite a few. If you're performing set like that, then yeah, you're probably going to be high on it, right? This individual, whoever the fuck he has, 200,000 subscribers in this bullshit workout, is going to quit as soon as it gets difficult, and as soon as his body begins to recruit fast twitch motor units. Ready? He quits. Okay. Alright, next exercise, we... 
quit your set right when you start to recruit high threshold motor units you're going to need more sets duh so if you're performing like him you're going to need plenty of sets if you perform a set like this however you're going to be able to recruit all the muscle five your body is able to recruit in just one set very quickly, very efficiently. If you're doing sets like this, you're not going to be able to do 20 sets per muscle group per week. You're going to be able to do one or two. So The, the how many sets debate is absolutely stupid because a set like this is way more intense, it creates way more stress, recruits way more muscle fibers and motor units than whatever the hell you want to call this bullshit. Now this is how most people come in the gym. So when people say, oh, one set? No way, there's no way you can optimize growth with one set. Well, this is how they're doing a set. This is their perception of a set. All right, neck exercise. That, to me, is not, that is not a set. That is not exercise. That is movement that you're doing with your body that happens to have a weight in your hand. This is exercise. If you are doing your sets like this, see that constant tension on the muscle? No rest, no momentum, contracting, intensity. Look how intense he is. He gets to the point, this is James Fisher, James Steele. They do a lot of research in the UK on muscle growth. They get to the point where you'll see he can't even hold the weight. Watch his arms just die out on the next one. He gets to the point where his arms are so weak that they just, they can't even keep his arms up. Now, if you do a set like this, well, guess what? One or two sets is going to be optimal. Look at this. Look, his arm, he can't even hold his arms up. So what do you think is more effective for muscle growth? This? You think this is more effective than muscle growth? Pushing as hard as you possibly can, high intensity to where arms give out? Or this button? What, what do you think? You have to be a complete moron to think this is more effective. If you think this is more effective than this, You're a moron. That's it. My golden era system teaches this. It teaches you how to do God, this. but we're going to keep going. Next exercise is supinated barbell rows. We're doing supinated to focus more on the lats and do less mid back. around the gym with a complete moron like this at 135 pounds. So he wet, doing bullshit, and never seeing an ounce of muscle growth your whole life. I don't know why he has a channel because he's got a extremely unimpressive physique and a very dirty apartment. The fuck is wrong with this guy? Anyway. Now, take that information for what it's worth. Do what you want with it. If you want to go out there and do 400 sets of workout, I don't give a shit. But for those of you who want to save some time, who have other obligations like, gee, I don't know, job, business, family, and you can't afford to spend two hours a day in the gym flinging weight around like this idiot, get my golden era system, learn how to stimulate your muscles correctly and time efficiently, okay? And I'm giving away my advanced arm training system today, the next 24 hours, 5 p.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, because if you have, so if you have small arms like this twerp,
This is a big reason why like I like this. to prioritize oblique exercises at the end of my workout. So that's well, the format of the full body workout my, in the um, gym to transfer out of the gym, whether it's just system. functional daily activities or a sport that well, you're doing. I also added an ab exercise time. at the end to get a little bit more ab work. While ground based free weight exercises yeah. hit the abs yeah. well, they Nothing don't hit the abs in the trans. Get yeah, good stretch like at the bottom because guy. you're able to go more range of motion. No, so in like bench press, third exercise. Well, you're gonna get my um, advanced arm training system for free. So you can go from 12 inch arms like this guy to 15 or 16 inch arms like somebody who actually lifts weights, okay? <clears throat> All right, let's go over some questions. Oh. Um, keep in mind, a couple housekeeping rules. Do not ask me questions about workout frequency or workout volume. Just don't ask me a question like, if I work out three days a week, is that better than two days a week? Don't ask me those questions. I've answered those a million times. All right, because I just, honestly, I just won't answer them. <clears throat> All right, let's see. If you got questions, put them in. Um, okay, good way to train the lower back safely. Yeah, simple. Um, do this exercise. Lower back exercise. If you want to train your lower back safely and you don't have access to a good lumbar extension machine, simply do this. Everybody's got this angled reverse crunch machine in their gym. This will be just fine for strengthening uh, the muscles in your lumbar. Jay, coach's response. The greater the weight, the greater the tension. Wrong. Consequently, the greater the stimulus. Wrong. Therefore, a concentric phase must be done with speed and able to lift the greater weight. No. Heavier weight. No. The more effort, the more tension. The more effort, the more motor unit recruitment. A heavier weight generally causes you to put forth more effort. A greater weight will recruit more motor units, but it is not necessary for recruiting more motor units. For instance, I can contract against a wall as hard as I can. It'll feel like a very heavy weight, but is it weight? No. Is pushing against my wall as hard as I can, not being able to move it, is that more weight? No, that's resistance. Weight is one component of resistance. Velocity, leverage, moment arm, body proportions, friction, those all contribute to resistance. So if anyone says the greater the weight, the greater the tension, they are an idiot and they don't understand how your body recruits motor units and they don't understand tension they don't understand anything all right would i receive a higher stimulus in muscle growth if i were to do eccentric overload at the end of a set no you would not that was also studied not none of these things are going to make a significant difference in muscle growth in the long run like i said nothing does nothing does um doing negative eccentric might cause you to push your body harder and remember the more effort the more stimuli your nervous system the more your nervous system recruits motor units so the harder you push the more muscle fiber is recruited the more muscle fiber is stimulated for growth so negative eccentric overload might help you push harder but it would be unnecessary if you were pushing as hard as you can to concentric failure, okay? Mr. America Hart mentions this method of doing a few heavy negative at the end of the set. Yeah, that was something like Mike Mentor did. Whether that be with the help of a partner or of your other arm or legs doing single. It could be a technique that you could use if you don't know how to train intensely enough. But what I suggest you do is learn how to train 
intensely enough. Learn how to properly train to failure by joining my coaching. In my coaching program, I teach you guys how to properly train to failure. So that way you don't need to use all this other nonsense. Most What I've noticed is most people are about 60 to 70% of the adequate intensity for optimal muscle growth. Meaning you're only growing about 60 to 70% of your potential. That other 40 to 30% is going to come from learning how to train hard. And that's what I teach in coaching. Links in the description. If you don't learn how to train hard, you can try every supplement, every type of organic bullshit chicken, every pre-workout, every machine. You're not going to grow muscle. Okay? So you got two options. One, try this on your own for the rest of your life and fail. Two, join my coaching and let me teach you and grow muscle fast. It's up to you. Uh, there are many studies that suggest you don't need one gram of protein per pound of body weight for maximum muscle growth. Yes. So I just take 0.8 grams per pound of goal weight and I'm 15% fat. Okay, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I recommend people aim high because why not? Okay. Well, you know, you can't, you know, 0.8 grams. You don't want to make your whole life a fucking math problem. Okay. You just want to eat some protein. Okay. Whether it's 0.8. 0.8 grams or one gram per pound of body weight like that's pointless to even think about all these numbers you're breaking down 0.8 grams per pound of gold weight 15 percent fat 0.85 grams of temperature dude none of that shit matters literally none of that shit matters are you leaving gains on the table no like i said nothing makes a significant difference in your muscle growth not even really the protein if you're you know, whether you're higher or lower in protein, it's still going to be up to your body and your genetics, really. And the only factor that really matters is how hard you push. So many people are worried about, well, I'm, you know, not taking one gram of protein per pound of body weight and stem doing 0.8. Is that why I'm not growing? It's like, no, you're not growing because you're only about 60 to 70 percent of the adequate intensity you need for failure or for growth. So... That's why I need to join coaching so I can teach you. Or you can continue to do what most people do is fiddle with numbers. Okay, You can fiddle with numbers for 10, 15, 20 years and see nothing because that doesn't matter. What matters is how hard you push and people simply are not pushing hard. <sighs> okay, I'm tired of all this David Goggins grinding till, till you... Yeah, me too. I'm tired of his shit too, honestly. You know, David Goggins, he's got to move on. Has anyone seen Goggins recently? He looks catabolic as fuck from all the excess cortisol. Yep, he does. He looks bad. <laughs> you know, but there are a lot of people who kind of like... You got a lot of people who just kind of like that shit. You got, you got a lot of people who just need a kick in the ass because their father never gave it to them. Um, and if David Goggins does that for you, great. I had male role models to do that for me i never needed that shit <clears throat> arthur jones photo in your background yeah you guys like that right it's cool right i had it printed out um at walgreens and framed it it's mike mentor's birthday oh shit how about that i didn't even know that <laughs> i just did a live stream happy birthday rest in peace mike mentor ray mentor arthur jones Thoughts on monkey feet. They help you lift dumbbells with your feet. Why would you ever lift a dumbbell with your feet? I emailed Dr. Doug McCall in 2002. <laughs> after noticing he reduced frequency after Christmas holiday and forced break, went to the same, found a week plus was required to grow and get stronger. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think a lot of people need a super consolidated routine yet because I think most people are only 60 to 70 percent of the adequate intensity you know I've got a lot of people who join my coaching and you know they tell me well you know I'm training to failure and I'm doing everything you say but I'm still not growing and I go yeah we'll see about that send me a video of you training and what I notice is most people are not even close to real muscle failure that is what's leaving gains on the table. It's not the protein. It's not the supplements. It's not the sleep. It's not the ice baths. 
It's not the fucking whatever. It's just you're not, you're far from failure. Uh, I can tell you've done hit for your brain. You keep speaking logic and it's all making sense. People need to think for themselves and think critically. Well, I think we... I, I th well, people are kind of conditioned to recognize patterns. I'm under the belief that critical thinking ability is kind of weaned out of people for, for a good reason, to make them follow instructions better. <laughs> so most people, you know, there's, a, there's a, a large percentage of people, probably 20 to 25, maybe 30% of people, who just will not, cannot understand exercise. I don't understand art, never will, don't get it. Um, I have a hard time understanding, I don't understand fashion, don't get it. I don't think I ever will. You know, some people just don't understand exercise. You know, that's just the way it is. You know, if I were to you know, put together in outfits where I wear Nike and Under Armour all the fucking time, honestly. If I were to put together an outfit, I would probably Google a picture and try to copy it. <laughs> so when people go do a workout, they Google a workout and copy it. You know, we do, a lot of people just don't understand. Um, you know, this info is for people who can and will understand it. All right, imagine surgically removing your quads and then try to squat. See how much they're involved now. It's a good guideline to see how much muscle is involved. Dude, that's fucking smart. You're right. That's good. That's good. Think about it. Think if you were, so do an exercise. Think if you were to remove that muscle from your body surgically, if, how difficult it would be to do that exercise. Good way to see if a muscle is involved. Yeah. All right. Do you recommend doing time static contraction for 30, 30, 30 or 10, 10, 10? Doesn't matter. None of that matters, remember? Depending on which method I use, it will affect how many sets you have to do per muscle. No, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you push hard. That's it. 10, 10, 10, 30, 30, 30, whatever the hell you want to do. 30, 30, 30 will create a little more metabolic stress, be more uncomfortable, and take a little longer. 10, 10, 10 will recruit just as many motor units. Because remember, intensity is what makes your nervous system send the signal to motor units and contract muscle fibers. Not the length of the set, not the length of time static contraction, not the rep speed, not the volume, nothing. What exercises should one retract the scapula? All pulling movements. Vertical pull, horizontal pull, keep the scapula retracted. Actually, chest press too, keep the scapula retracted. If you recover quickly after workout, how do you determine if you trained hard enough or if your recovery ability is just good? Um, you, you'll know if you trained hard enough because you'll feel weakened. Your muscles will feel weaker, maybe a little achy even. Not necessarily, though. You'll feel a little weaker the rest of the day. The next morning, if you feel good to go, and strong, you didn't train hard enough. I mean, I find, you know, maybe if you're on a lot of growth hormone, <laughs> you might be able to wake up the next day and train really hard again, but not normal natural people. Do you recommend working with a training partner to help get through sticking points and actually train to failure? Yeah. If your training partner was you know, knowledgeable if you knew what to do. Yeah, a training partner would be great. Uh, with training partners, I always train harder. I don't really have any. I'm usually the training partner helping people through the workout. But yeah, a training partner will help you train harder, generally. Even them just being there generally helps. What is the best way to keep track of reps? I'm thinking so much of speed. I forget what rep I'm on. You know, you could have someone count for you, but honestly, man, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the best way to do it is to track time. 
hang a stopwatch from your neck and time your set. Um, but as long as you're training to failure, man, it really doesn't matter. I mean, tracking is useful, of course, but I wouldn't get too caught up in tracking. Not yet. Surprise, he has him working on a Star Trek. Yeah, um, it's probably their university gym. Um, it's probably just what the gym at their school has, likely. Yeah, I mean, that Star Trek is also a Nautilus leverage machine. It's not awful, um, but I I don't use it, <laughs> you know. Um, and we're talking about, here, I'll bring it up again. Oops, this is a completely, yeah, we're talking about this machine here. That's Simon Shawcross, the guy I did hit, hit me with. Um, you know, I... The gyms I go to have this machine, I don't use it, but it's not terrible. I just, I hate Star Trek. I just, just absolutely hate it. All right. All right. Many people will improve in muscle size even on volume. Yes. Failure is not always a requirement. Failure is not a requirement, but it is the best stimulus. It's not a requirement. You don't need to recruit all the motor units to stimulate muscle growth. But you do need to recruit all the motor units to stimulate muscle growth in all of the muscles and all the motor units. So if you want all of your muscles to grow or the most muscle to grow, you need to train with super high intensity. Not necessarily to failure. Could be one or two short. Could be three short. Why do we train to failure? Because we don't know. We don't know if three reps in reserve recruits all the motor units. We don't know if two does. We don't know if one does. So we go to failure because we don't know. 75% intensity, 80%. Yeah. We don't know. So we go all the way. So that way we hit that threshold. Oh, there's sound on that YouTube? My bad. <sighs> All right. How can I improve my muscle tone, Brian? What do you mean by muscle tone? Okay, so the actual physiological term for muscle tone is the amount of tension the muscle makes at rest. This is muscle tone. Muscle tone is not definition. It is not, you know, what this guy looks like in this picture over here. <laughs> it's not the shape and appearance of your muscle. Muscle tone is passive tension at rest. And when your muscle gets stronger, that improves. Are you asking me how do you improve the way your muscles look or a tone to look? Tone is a fitness buzzword that actually means something completely different when it comes to actual physiology. Would restricting carbohydrates for a period of time be beneficial for fat loss? The only reason restricting carbohydrates would help with fat loss is because by taking carbohydrates out of your diet, you're taking out a huge um, portion of your daily calorie intake. Most people get like 70 to 80% of their calories per day through carbs. If I pull my carbs out, well, I just cut my daily calorie intake by 70, 80%, didn't I? It's the calorie restriction that is aiding fat loss. Not the fact, not carbs. Thoughts on monkey feet? Yeah, I don't even know what monkey feet are, and I don't understand why you'd want to lift a dumbbell with your feet. <laughs> I just don't get it. Are vegetables bad for you, Paul? Paul Saladino says they are. <laughs> Paul Saladino is a fucking idiot. No, vegetables are not bad for you. It's fucking ridiculous. But when would be a good time to add in time static hold? Same day as a workout or just another day? Time static hold is just a method of training your muscles. You could do it as a workout. You could use it for a couple of exercises in your workout. It's not something that should be done differently or outside of your training. It can be part of your training. 
Why was James Steele doing a set extender? Didn't the research say it is not recommended as long as the set is taken to muscle failure? Well, probably just for the video, honestly. Or he overestimated the weight and um, the set was too short. One of the two reasons. I'm not really sure. This was uh, this was published four years ago. There's no way this was done in 2019. No way. This is way older than that. Um, but yeah, it's probably because the time under load that he was going for was uh, too low. 54 years old, your system is for me. I want to buy Golden Era System. I want to be sure. Yeah, um, click the link in the description of this video. Golden Era System's right there. And if you get Golden Era System today in the next 24 hours before 5 p.m. tomorrow, you get my arm training specialization program for free. I, I train body weight. What are your thoughts on clapping push-ups? They are an explosive movement, but they give me an incredible chest pump. There's no fucking reason to clap when you do a push-up. When you, it's ridiculous, ridiculous. What what is clapping doing? You know whether or not you get a pump is irrelevant when it comes to stimulating your muscle. When you do, when you contract your muscle, you're pumping blood into that working tissue, in order to give it substrate, give it oxygen that it needs to produce the contraction and to remove waste got nothing to do with a muscle growth stimulus. There's no reason to be clapping when you do a push-up. That's just the way people like to show off how strong they are or how little they weigh, in my opinion. You know, at, you know, 220 pounds like me, it's going to be a lot harder for me to do a clapping push-up than a 140-pound dude. <clears throat> what is better if you get the strength in an exercise, increase weight, or slow down rep? I don't know what that means. Jay, I would love to see you go through Mentor's video with Marcus Reinhardt. I think Drew Bay did it a while back, but it would be great to see you go through it like you did with the Yates Blood and Guts. Yeah, I actually know Marcus Reinhardt. He's, I've talked to him a couple times. Um, maybe I'll have him come on a live stream and we can go over the video with him. What do you think about that? That'd be cool. He's been asking me to come on and do a podcast and stuff. I just haven't done it. But yeah, why don't I have, I'll have Marcus come on. And uh, we'll go through the video. He could tell us about Mike. He can tell us his experience going through that workout in that video. Be cool. Do you teach how to eat in your coaching system too? Oh, yeah. I definitely do. I teach you guys how to diet in my coaching too, which is also very important. So if you guys are having a hard time with diet, click the link in the description, book a call with me, join my coaching, and I'll show you how to diet. Clapping push-ups, nonsense. Yeah, it's just clapping push-up is just... <laughs> just beyond silly what are your thoughts about the ARX machine I'm not really sure because I've never used one alright I'm having that issue I'm noticing I'm giving up once the muscle starts to burn that's what most people do and that's why people with normal genetics lack muscle growth remember the comment earlier but Dave Smith said you don't need to train to failure to stimulate muscle right correct but people who have average muscle growth genetics are definitely going to want to. People with average exercise genetics or average muscle growth genetics are going to see more muscle growth from more intense training. Jay, do you use a training journal to track your progressive overload process? Not anymore, no. Right now I'm just maintaining. You know, if I was really trying to add muscle... I'd probably start tracking my workouts, but now I go in, I stimulate, and I go home. Jay, if you're training alone and can't get help doing negatives or even the one or two last reps you need help on, should someone do rest, pause reps, or lower the weight and try to squeeze out a few reps? Yeah, you could try that. You could do rest, pause, or drop sets. If you're having a hard time getting to real muscle failure, those alternative techniques may work. Why are the first three to four reps warm-ups? Well, think about it. What's a warm-up? A warm-up is generally an exercise, a set or two that you do of low intensity, isn't very hard, easy, and you do it to start 
increasing your heart rate, pump blood to your muscles, calcium, etc. The first three, four reps of a set are pretty easy, aren't they? That's why it's a warm up. Is it better to train with free weights or machines? Does not matter at all whatsoever what you choose to train your muscles with. Oh, Joy Pass, that's smart. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two. Yeah, that's pretty smart. Do you have different levels of coaching? And is it the VIP link on the Golden Era page? Yes, that is the VIP. I don't have different levels of coaching. Basically, the way it is, you join my coaching, and there's no time limit on it. It's just one fee, and I get you where you need to be. If it takes two, three months, great. If it takes six to eight months, fine. We just work together until your body gets where it needs to be. That's it. So there's no time crunch on it either. I found that when people want to join coaching, they're worried like, well, I only have four months or three months with this guy and I have all these things going on and I don't think I could fit it in. Well, that's the thing about my coaching is there is, there's no time crunch. There's no pressure. <sighs> okay. Do you ever do farmer's carry? Someone asked me that the other day. No, I do not. Um, holding dumbbells could potentially help with your grip strength, but there's no reason to walk around with them. Well, you know, holding dumbbells like this, heavy dumbbells, for your grip strength, but why would you why would you walk? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Nordic curls are, are the ultimate hit workout for hams. Most people will never be able to do one, but struggling with it is great for the hams. Yeah, Nordic curls are freaking hard. I don't even know if I could do it. I haven't tried. Do you have any future plans to upload more videos to Golden Air System as updates? I do. Um, I'm just doing them slowly. Great to be great to hear you, Big Jim. Great to hear you interview Big Jim Flanagan for firsthand info from a hit pioneer. He doesn't live far from me. That's what I have to do. Now that you mention it, I got to go do a video with him. I have his number. Um, I just haven't called him yet. I have to call him and set up a time to go do a video with him. He's an hour and a half away from me, I think. <laughs> so. Definitely. Um, Jim Flanagan is very old school. He doesn't like technology. He doesn't He doesn't even text. So getting him on a, a live stream would be undoable. Does hard physical work on rest days disturb muscle growth? Um, probably for most people. But it really does depend. It really depends. Will you return to the old layout of questions with Steamyard? Marcelo, you've asked me this 20 times. My answer was no, is no, and will remain to be no. I don't know why you are trying to get me to switch to something I don't want to do. Get over it. God, that is annoying. Like, why do you care? This is the way I do it now. St Streamyard doesn't have high definition output like this. That's why I do it this way. <clears throat> I would love to hear your thoughts on Eric Bugen Hagen's latest video. Do not know who that is. Is the Golden Air System one time purchase? Yes. It's just $47 for Golden Air System. You get my free arm program and you also the Golden Air system will be updated automatically as time goes on. I'm very likely going to redo all the videos in higher quality. And it's it's a video ebook. It's just the, it's a just a video program. It's like when you go in the in the old days when you bought a workout tape. Every time you put it in your VCR, it still worked. Same thing. Okay, is the shaking towards the end of the set a good indication of intensity? Yes. 
I felt weak after the workout and a little sore the day after. Yeah. Yep. How do you possibly do supersets with one set to failures? Just go to another machine when you're done? Yeah. What do you mean? A superset means you go from one exercise to the next with no rest. That's how you do it. All right. Why did you skip my question? Oh, let me see. Benarosin. I didn't see your question. Oh, well. Okay. Mm, ask your question again. I don't see it. Remember, don't ask me about workout frequency. Okay. Um. Yeah. How do you do only half a workout per week? <laughs> By doing once every other week, of course. When it comes to workout frequency, go back when you're ready. I mean, if if you're still not recovered don't go to the gym it's dude it's that simple it's literally that simple um if you go into the gym and you feel tired you feel lethargic you feel weak you're unrecovered or you had a long fucking day <laughs> you know just don't work out if you feel like shit it's like you guys are really overthinking this i think a lot of the the reason people overthink this is because, you know, most people have average ability to grow muscle. And since you're not growing muscle at like, you know, five, ten pounds a month, I think people start to blame other things. But the, the, the truth is most people will, will grow modest amounts of muscle. <clears throat> not, you know, 30, 40 pounds. I usually do drop sets for all exercises because I can't fully work my muscles in one set only. Okay, you know, it's fine. No, it's not wrong. It's just if you learned how to train and do that one set properly, it would just, it would save you some time. All right, I searched on YouTube videos of fitness influencers that trained using HIT style also to see their progress, but there are a few video results because do you know how come? Yes, because most fitness influencers are genetically gifted individuals, and the first thing they ever try in the gym is going to give them great results, so they have no reason to find anything else. Therefore, there's no reason why they would ever come across high-intensity training. You're short about the chain on the machine. Brought back memories from the first gym I went to. All Nautilus machines on one side, and free weights on the other. Yeah, man, the... The gym I grew up in, first gym I went to, and the one I grew up in, all old Nautilus, greasy chains. Just, it was a disgusting gym, but I loved it. <laughs> if you need 13 days recovery, you should probably go to a doctor. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you need 13 days to recover, Benarosin. Um, your volume might be too high, or, I mean, I've had one... So I shouldn't push through delayed onset muscle soreness. Well, if soreness is not an indicator of not being recovered, if, if you're sore for 10, 12 days, you're just sore. That doesn't mean you're not recovered. It just means your pain receptors are very sensitive to muscle damage and inflammation. Um, some people, delayed onset muscle soreness is like a problem some people have. You might just have that, in which case, if 13 days go by and you're still sore, I would just do another workout. Is a cold shower good for muscle growth or repair time? A cold shower will do literally fucking nothing for muscle growth or repair time. Nothing. Hit is very humbling. Weight that I was lifting went way down since I slowed down. Like I've never felt the way they did after slow pushing. Yep. Daughter wants to know, do you have a girlfriend? I do. And she's making me dinner right now. <laughs> I've got a girlfriend that's an excellent cook. Sorry, ladies. You're going to have to be Gordon fucking Ramsay to take her place. A girl version, of course. Right. Uh, Benarosin, can you put all... Can you put your question into one post, please? 
Is it good to go up too slow with the weight? Uh, do you mean can you go up too slow with the weight? Mm, no, not really. Well, it depends. If it's a machine and it's got a lot of friction, then yes, you can go too slow to where it's easy. Maybe try a split routine. Yeah. I don't remember those old Nautilus machines breaking down either. No, dude, they, you're right. They were never broken. They were built. Well, think about it. Who made those old uh, Nautilus machines? This guy. You think that guy with his attitude is going to put together a bad machine? No. Do you consider yourself having good or bad genetics? I don't know, dude. You tell me. What do you think? Good or bad genetics? Come on, man. <laughs> I have insane genetics. Insane genetics. Uh, let's see. So if you have more exercise and workout, you dig a deeper hole and you need more days to recover? Um, yeah, kind of. But... You can have too many exercises in a workout. So a lot of the times you don't want to keep adding recovery days. You might want to reduce the amount of exercises per workout first. Okay. How do I add the arm specialization program for free? Oh, by the way. Don't buy the arm specialization program when you get Golden Air System. Just skip that page so I don't have to go through and send you a refund. I will send it to you manually. So what I do is the next morning or periodically throughout the day, I go into the system and I send it over manually. So I will send you the arm system. Um, I used to do seven to eight exercises per workout. Recently cut down to four to five exercises, training once every five, six days. That's what I have to do. So over time, your ability to fatigue your muscles deeply improves. So the first workout, I may dig a little hole. The second workout, a little deeper. You know, three, four, five months later, I'm digging a trench every workout. But my ability to get out of that trench or recover from it does not improve. So as you become more experienced with this, you're going to have to cut back your volume and probably your frequency, and in many cases both. I don't have access to an autos pullover machine. That's fine. Other than pullover bench, do you know any other one you can recommend? No. The pullover. The pullover is a machine. The pullover is not an exercise. If you try to replicate this machine with a dumbbell, a cable, or something, it's not the same. It's not the same. Do not try to replicate the pullover exercise with a machine or, or with a dumbbell or a cable. It's not the same. This is a very specifically designed machine with a belt, with a specific cam. <clears throat> but it's okay. You don't need a pullover machine to optimize the growth of your back. It's just another way to skin the cat, so to speak. Okay. Benarosin. Am I saying that right? I feel like I'm not. I do a 25-minute full body workout, six sets. Delayed onset muscle soreness lasts like two to three days. Normal. Fatigue comes on and off like one to two weeks after. I eat 500 grams of meat a day, so I'm not malnourished and I sleep enough. Um, 500 grams of meat a day is not that much. Um, but yeah, you're, you're not malnourished. Uh, the fatigue comes on and off <clears throat> one to two weeks after. Well, you got to look at your lifestyle too. Do you have a stressful life? Do you work a lot? Do you, are you going to school and studying a lot? You know, that kind of stuff is going to wear you out and make you fatigued. It's not necessarily your recovery ability or your workout. Do you have a nagging bitch of a wife that won't leave you alone? Well, that's probably going to slow you down too. You know, it's other things will will appear to be you not recovering from a workout, but it could just be you're just tired. 
Have you ever felt that you have reached overtraining? Yes. Oh yeah. I notice when I start to feel very fatigued for several days. So say I work out on a Monday and Thursday comes, I'm still just tired. Probably overtrained and I just I just wait until it all goes away and then I hit it again. But if you want to work biceps, triceps, traps, forearms, etc., should I just add a workout which focuses on small muscle groups? Well, no. Do you want to know why? Your biceps, triceps, and traps are not small muscle groups. The, the belief that your biceps and your triceps and your shoulders and forearms are small muscle groups is wrong. If you were to remove all the muscles from your body surgically, like Dave Smith said, and put them on a scale, they would all be extremely similar in weight. In fact, the largest muscle in your upper body, I believe, is your triceps. So no, you don't want to do a workout that, focus, a workout that focuses on small muscle groups because they're not small muscle groups. They're actually very large muscle groups. And these muscle groups are not, it is not required, possibly helpful, but not required to train them all directly. Likely helpful, possibly helpful to do direct work for biceps, triceps, traps, forearms, etc. Obviously forearms, but not required. All right. So if I'm training as a natty, will I ever stop growing? Even if I continue to train with the highest level of intensity, yes, you will stop growing. You could probably put on from the start of your training career. Say you started working out at 16. You could probably put on about 30 pounds of muscle-ish, give or take 10, throughout the course of your entire training career. Muscle growth is not unlimited. It's not up to you. The amount of muscle your body grows is up to your genetics, and there will be a point where it stops. All right. All right, guys, we're pulling up on an hour here, so I'm going to cut it here. Um, again, golden arrow system comes with the advanced arm training system, the arm specialization system for free for the next 24 hours, 5 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Sales over. So get my two programs, only 47 bucks. Learn how to train this way. If you're a hard gainer and you've been going to the gym for a long time and you have not seen much muscle growth, this will work, okay? Try it. If you need help with your diet or if you want the best physique you can possibly have, join my coaching group. It's lifetime access. There's a link in the description to book a call with me so I can show you what it is, how it works, and I will get you the results that you need with my direct help. Okay? Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, bell notification, all that nonsense.